President Trump also signed an executive order promoting free speech and religious liberty, essentially alleviating the burden of the Johnson Amendment. However, Congress began the process to repeal the amendment. One America's John Hines has more from Washington. The Johnson Amendment prohibits churches from engaging in any political campaign activity or risk losing their tax-exempt status. Although President Trump's executive order helps, it will take Congress to actually repeal the law. And now a House committee has begun the process to do just that. We are trying to make sure that pastors and churches and, and synagogues and, and temples have an opportunity to share what it is they believe from the scriptures that they would share without fear of religious persecution. And pastors sharing what it is they believe is something North Carolina Congressman Mark Walker, an ordained Southern Baptist minister and pastor himself, knows something about. And as a member of the Government Reform Committee considering a repeal of the Johnson Amendment, Walker acknowledges President Trump's executive order helps get them closer to their goal. We're hearing some good things. We hear that it does have some Johnson Amendment language in it, so we're excited about it. Could it go more? It probably could, but we respect the fact that he's at least considering doing something like this. This is President I, Trump. Uh, President Trump, yes. And I believe it allows the House to have a little bit more augmentation to do our part as well. While the President's executive order is helpful in mitigating the Johnson Amendment, Amendment, Christiana Holcomb of the Alliance Defending Freedom thinks a complete repeal is absolutely necessary. The Johnson Amendment has created an untenable situation for America's pastors. They're fearful, they're subject to IRS harassment and intimidation, and they need Congress to act now to fix the situation so that they can have their free speech restored to them again. It's time to get the IRS out of the business of being speech police. They have no business censoring what pastors preach from their own pulpits. And getting the IRS out of the business of speech police may actually return things to the way they used to be. At the founding of the nation, says committee member Mark Meadows. The clergy was not without a voice from the very founding of this Judeo-Christian nation. That's exactly right. And they spoke out on the most important issues of the day, including the Revolutionary War, civil rights, so on and so forth. This was a joint hearing between two subcommittees of the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee, and it marks an effort to lay the groundwork for the eventual repeal of the Johnson Amendment, which may actually come as part of a broader tax reform package. John Hines, One American News, Washington.